The Mystery of the Missing Lunch by Joanna Hurwitz, illustrated by Joe Zapata. At noon, on the first day of school, a very hungry Ramon Garcia looked for his lunch bag in the coat closet. He searched the shelf above the coat hooks, but couldn't find his lunch. My bag isn't here, he complained. Are you sure you brought it? asked his friend Emily Wilson. Maybe you left it at home. Ramon was sure. His mom had made him his favorite sandwich, salami, and he knew he hadn't forgotten it. Here's my lunchbox, reported Ted Collins between sneezes. Ted had been sneezing all morning. Allergies, he explained apologetically. Ramon didn't hear him. He was too angry. Someone took my salami sandwich, he said to Emily, and I'm going to find out who. Maybe it was Jack Crawford, Emily whispered. He's always hungry. Ramon took out the little notebook he had bought to write down homework assignments. It would be good for keeping track of any clues. Then he went over to Jack. He noticed at once that there was no lunch bag or box on Jack's desk. Where's your lunch? he asked. I don't have one, answered Jack. Why not? asked Ramon. Jack pulled a couple of dollars out of his pocket. I'm buying today, he said. Ramon leaned closer to Jack and sniffed deeply. He couldn't smell any salami on his classmate's breath. What's that? asked Emily. She pointed to a brown sponge on Jack's shirt. It looks like mustard. It's just an old paint stain, claimed Jack. I got it when I helped my dad during the summer. It may look like mustard, but it's called golden oak on the paint can. A likely alibi, Ramon muttered to himself. He made a note of the stain on Jack's shirt. All right, what's going on here? asked Mrs. Richmond, their fourth grade teacher. Someone took my lunch, said Ramon. Don't look at me, said Jack. I'm innocent. Mrs. Richmond clapped her hands. Everyone in your seats, she shouted. A lunch is missing. We can't leave for the cafeteria until we find it. Oh, grumbled all the students together. By now, everyone was hungry. Ted sneezed three times in succession. No one knew anything about Ramon's lunch bag. The whole class waited while Mrs. Richmond checked the coat closet, but she didn't find Ramon's lunch. By this time, Ramon was so hungry his stomach was growling. Mrs. Richmond must have been hungry herself, because she solved the problem by handing Ramon a $5 bill. Buy something with this, she told him. You can pay me back tomorrow. I have a feeling that you left your lunch on the bus. I can't imagine any of her classmates taking it. Of course, it was a relief that Ramon could buy some food. However, he was 100% certain that he had put the bag in the closet. He was determined to discover who had taken it. In the cafeteria, while he was eating the soggy tuna fish sandwich he had bought, Ramon wrote again in his notebook. He made a list of all his classmates. Any one of them could be the culprit. Emily leaned forward to see. Just because you like salami doesn't mean that everyone else does, she pointed out. Josh, Tina, and Margaret are vegetarians. They wouldn't eat a salami sandwich. You're right, agreed Ramon, crossing out their names. Sarah thinks salami is smelly. She holds her nose whenever she's around it. And all Max ever eats is peanut butter and jelly, he added. He crossed out their names, too. After a minute's consideration, he crossed Jack's name off his list. Ted had been too busy sneezing all morning to secretly consume a salami sandwich, Ramon decided. Off went his name, too. Cross me off the list of suspects, too, said Emily. I don't even like salami. So far, out of a class of 18, eight were definitely innocent. Then there were Beverly and Grace. Neither of them was tall enough to reach the shelf where Ramon put his lunch. He crossed off their names, too. The list of potential suspects kept getting shorter. It got even shorter when Ramon realized that he was one of the 18 students in the class, and he knew for certain that he had not eaten the salami sandwich. Ramon sighed deeply. His chances of solving this case were getting slimmer and slimmer. Then, after lunch, when the students were given quiet time for reading, Ramon went back to the closet to see if he could find any clues that he hadn't noticed earlier. He looked under the book bags but found nothing suspicious there. On his way back to his desk, Ramon passed the library corner. He stopped. What was that scratching sound? Could there be a mouse in the classroom? Mice eat anything. Looking around, he saw poor Ted was still blowing his nose. Then he spotted something. Pieces of torn brown paper lay on the floor near Ted's desk. Ramon picked them up. Immediately, he noticed that there were ink markings on the papers. He placed them together like puzzle pieces to form the picture of a smiley face. 
Ramon recognized it at once. It was the same smiley face as Mom had drawn on his lunch bag that morning. This was a very important clue. Whoever had taken his lunch had torn up the evidence. Just then, Mr. Gordon, the assistant principal, knocked and came into the classroom. Here's the new computer we ordered for you, Mrs. Richmond. He placed it on the counter. As he started to leave, Mr. Gordon said, By the way, has anyone seen a stray cat? She sneaked into the school building a few weeks ago when we were painting, and I think she's still hiding somewhere. The kids looked at each other and shook their heads. Please let me know if you do. I want to find her a home, Mr. Gordon added. Mrs. Richmond looked around with a little chuckle. Well, I don't see any cat in this room, she said. At that moment, Ted gave three more loud sneezes. Wait a minute, Ramon called out. The biggest clue had been right there under his nose all this time. Ted, what kind of allergy do you have? he asked. Could you be allergic to cats? How did you know? Ted asked when he stopped blowing his nose. Your nose gave it away, said Ramon. Ted grinned. I'm very allergic to any animal with fur, he admitted. Mrs. Richmond turned to Mr. Gordon, and I was worried he was allergic to fourth grade. Ramon started pulling all the books out of the shelves in the library corner. The other students and Mr. Gordon helped. Sure enough, there behind the mystery books was the solution to the mystery of the missing lunch. Three little kittens were hiding amid the remains of Ramon's salami sandwich. But where's the mother cat? asked Mrs. Richmond. She won't be far away from her kittens, Mr. Gordon said. A loud hiss confirmed his words. On top of the closet stood the anxious mother cat. You stole my lunch, Ramon scolded the cat, but he was smiling. He was pleased that he did not have to accuse one of his classmates. The mother cat jumped off the closet and slipped out the door. There she goes, said Mr. Gordon. Well, I'll take these kittens to my office until we find good homes for them. Their mama will find them. Cats have a good sense of smell. And they like salami, said Ramon. Clues about the author and illustrator. Joanna Hurwitz likes to write about everyday boys and girls, like the ones in this story, and their funny adventures. Joanna gets her story ideas from many places. She thinks about children she knew as a librarian and about people and places she's seen on her trips. She also gets ideas from her family and, as proven in this story, her cats. Joe Zapata did not plan on becoming a children's book illustrator. He planned to be an engineer, but then he went back to school to study illustration. Joe thinks that children who want to be artists should spend a lot of time reading and studying math.